We are back. thrilled to have Greg back uh, from the Concord Food Co-op. First time been back in the studio in a while, Greg. Good, welcome back. Oh, uh, I'm so glad to be back. It was it was great pulling into the parking lot and great to be sitting here again. Uh, yeah. I even forgot to put the mic in front of me. It's been I've been so I, out I of know. Know. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. We're, we're, we're all a little out of sorts. Here. Yeah, but we find that we're going to find our way back in. No, it is all good, and, and uh, we've got you uh, today. Um, well, we got a, for a special reason today. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do. Is, is that the kickoff? That's, that's your kickoff. That's, that's, okay. yeah, that's the handoff. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, today uh, we are here to talk about the Concord Coalition to End Homelessness' inaugural barbecue. It's a uh, bluegrass barbecue. Uh, we have uh, Ellen Groh on. Uh, she's the executive director of the uh, Concord Coalition to End Homelessness. And Tom Raffio, the uh, president of New England uh, Delta Dental. Northeast. Northeast, Northeast Delta. Excuse me. Yeah. Northeast Delta Dental. Uh, and so I'm, uh, you know, we'll, I'd like to talk a little bit about the barbecue and then, uh, I'd like Ellen to speak about, uh, why this fundraiser is so important. And, uh, Tom is a, uh, the, uh, the Delta Dental is a, um, pillar of support for the, uh, Concord Coalition. And I'd like him to address, uh, why, um, you know, the work of the Concord Coalition is, uh, so important to his organization. Okay, hang, hang on. You point taken. Okay. It, uh, Northeast Delta Dental is a pillar of support for the Concord Coalition and homelessness. Yep. However, comma, uh, Northeast Delta Dental is also a pillar of support for the state of New Hampshire. Oh, I, okay. I just want to put that out there. That is very true. It, it is Peter, true. Peter, you're so nice. Thank you. But Tom, <laughs> but Tom, it's true, man. I mean, you guys are so involved in, in, in involved with communities and giving back to the community. This is just one facet. I mean, you are everywhere. And as Ken said, I will connect the dots for everybody as to why we're everywhere and why this one is near and dear to my heart for sure. And by the way, as a quick aside, I loved your Northwoods Law and the Turtles, and if we have the time, I'll, I'll talk about that show in a minute. But anyway, I'll let you proceed. <laughs> okay. All right. No, 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 no. Go ahead and let talk about the. Let's talk about this uh, uh, bluegrass barbecue. Um, we were uh, fortunate to. I guess redesign it so that we can uh, still host it. Um, and so uh, I'll read you. Uh, this is a quick little summary. So we yeah, can, how's this going to work? Um, it's uh, well. Um, very shortly, there will be a uh, PSA on the pulse. So I'll just read it to you, and it covers the vast majority of details, so we can get uh, through those quickly. Okay. She looks like a powerful locomotive, but she is really a mean smoker of a machine that can deliver an absolute feast of lip-smacking barbecue and sides. Grab your tickets for the Concord Coalition to End Homelessness Bluegrass Barbecue, Sunday, August 9th, on the river at Everett Arena in Concord. Bring your seating and enjoy your generous portions of barbecued brisket, smoked sausage, pulled pork, cowboy beans, coleslaw, and more. Also available, vegetarian meals packaged by the Concord Food Co-op. Tickets are limited and must be purchased online at ConcordHomeless.org. Wow. 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 The only, the only thing that's missing there is Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is, it is going to be on a Sunday. Yeah, okay, there you go. That's what I'm saying. So, so the powerful locomotive part. Um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Rock House Barbecue is a, a DBA of uh, Wilcox and Barton. Now, they're actually environmental and civil engineers uh, here, and they're going to be headquartered here in uh, Concord. Uh, but uh, what they do for their philanthropic arm is to actually do these barbecues. His wow. smoker is just phenomenal. He's a chef. He's uh, actually a, a vegan chef. Um, but his <laughs> smoker is like 20 feet long. He can actually wow. cook for 1,500 people, he claims. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I had a conversation with him, and he said, yeah, well, let's let's have this event. Let's have this uh, fundraising event uh, for the Concord uh, uh, Coalition to End Homelessness. So, um, you know, we can only uh, serve approximately 500 meals, so tickets will be very uh, limited, and uh, I, I really encourage uh, individuals to go to uh, ConcordHomeless.org uh, to uh, get their tickets uh, right away. Uh, we will probably have to cut off tickets several weeks before the event so all mm -hmm. the food can be uh, ordered. Right, and may, even may though I... you're driving by and the smell is absolutely incredible, you can't stop in unless you have a ticket. Uh, may a I, absolutely correct. May I be so brash as to ask how much are the tickets? Uh, it, we're, we're packaging in meals of two, and it's uh, $70, and vegetarian uh, meals are uh, 20 and what Bill Wilcox said is, I find great success with overfeeding my guest. So uh, okay. he, he makes uh, big uh, platters of food, and uh, everyone goes away happy and probably with leftovers. 
Nice. Tom, you've got so many uh, so many people knocking on your door saying, hey, hey, can you help us? Hey, can you help us? Why why the Concord Coalition to End Homelessness? Well, first, thanks for the opportunity, Peter, and uh, I love your show. And like I said, the Northwoods Law takes me from, away from the stresses and strains, <laughs> but when all you have to worry about is whether a deer was shot one minute after the deadline. But in any event, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a serious topic, and, you know, you talk about the community. So we're... We're doing okay. The dental uh, industry has come back about 90%, um, and we furloughed people, and we're bringing them back. And we've, we've uh, knowing that we're doing okay compared to, say, like the restaurant industry, we have given back to the community in terms of premium relief and funds to dentists, about $27 million back straight from our reserves over the last several months. And part of that commitment was continuing to support all of the great not-for-profits, you know, that make this state special. And, of course, the Concord Coalition, them homelessness is right up right up there. And Ellen and I go uh, way, way back um, because we have to support this because there's so much connection to all the other issues. All of these folks also have oral health issues. They have food, food insecurity. So there's no better cause than this, and it does relate to everything. And, and, and as Ellen and I like to chat, I mean, all of us are, many people are, you know, one paycheck away from being homeless, and it can be everybody. And there's a huge connection uh, to homelessness, um, issues with oral health. A lot of our veterans in the state are homeless, and we've done a great program, and we provide free dentistry, you know, for veterans as well. So I can think of no better cause than being a financial supporter for this pillar of support. And we, and we do other things, you know, like provide the, um, the toothbrushes. And I'm getting really passionate about it because, uh, we really need now is the time where we actually uh, companies that can afford to do it can um, you know step out there and help out and I'm not suggesting every company needs to give back 27 million dollars to the community but all of us can support you know organizations like the Concord Coalition to End Homelessness and so thank you uh, you know Peter Pat you know Ellen for uh, you know giving me opportunity to hopefully get some more financial contributions and and Greg I always enjoy your your segment so I really appreciate. You know, lend me, lending me a you know a few minutes of your your show and Peter. By the way, for the record, when I'm introduced for my radio show, Ken says I have the longest running radio show with the same name with uh, and with the host having curly hair. But I do know that you're actually the longest running. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Wow. <laughs> no curls though. Yeah, forget the hair. Yeah, thing. right. Yeah. The hair actually. Um, yeah, right. Ellen- <laughs> this is such a, a great top, and I'm, I'm so glad to be a supporter. And I love when Ellen contacts me because, like, I get this beautiful letter, and I, I'm always thinking, she doesn't, it doesn't have to be a beautiful letter. Just give me a quick call, and, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be a supporter. So, Ellen, take it away. Yeah, Ellen, you've got, a, you've got the best job in the world. you got Greg writing copy, this emotionally charged copy. you got Tom over here, passionate, and you're just sitting back going, all right, boys, yes. You're like the queen bee, just going, okay, you, you little worker bees, go over there and do this. And they're doing it. It's great. It is great. I do have the best job. I have the best job ever because I get to work with people like Tom and Greg and people who just really care about making a difference and care about taking care of each other. I, I loved what you said, Tom, about if not everyone can give $27,000 but or million dollars or whatever it is, but if you can give, please do give. Help each other out. This, this COVID epidemic has really exposed how many people were so very vulnerable who mm-hmm. were just one paycheck away? Mm-hmm. Uh, am I still there? I heard a beep. Oh, no, yes. you're, 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 okay. you're still Somebody's in. Somebody's trying then. to call me. I'll just leave them. Um, so so <laughs> it, it really has exposed so many vulnerabilities that were up there, but now we can all see them in broad daylight. So yeah. I'm just appreciative for all this support. Um, we're, we're looking to next winter already. How can we adapt our shelter to be COVID safe so that we're not um, adding to the spread? I don't think this is going to be over next winter. I think mm-hmm. we're going to have our second wave or maybe still be in our first wave. But we're, we're not out of this yet, so we're looking ahead to what can we do to keep people safe in the shelter next winter. And we're also, our main goal is more affordable housing, more supportive housing for chronically homeless people, and just more affordable housing so people don't become homeless so they can afford to pay their rent and, and pay for their food and their medical and dental as well. Right. So we don't have to make those hard choices. Ellen, um, talking about uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, uh, are, are homeless people, do we know, predisposed to be more susceptible 
to um, COVID-19? Often, often so, particularly uh, chronically homeless people almost always have compromised um, health systems, you know, of right. one, one, um, one kind of or, or another, so mm-hmm. yes. And it's just so hard to socially distance. You know, you don't right. have. A, how can you stay at home when you don't have a home? So yes, I would say that as a rule, they're they're more uh, susceptible to getting this disease and to having a bad, bad situation if they do get it because of their underlying medical conditions. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Now, see, and that's the thing I learned from Tom years and years ago about your overall body health mm-hmm. is related so closely to good oral health. Oh yeah. Right. You, but 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 Tom was the guy that beat that into me, and I thought, oh yeah, of course he's saying that. And then I started listening and started paying attention. I was like, oh, man, he's wow. right. Yeah. You know, it all starts with the oral health and impacts the whole rest of your well-being. Yes. He's right. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, in terms of the veterans, we do a lot of free dentistry for veterans. And I'm trying to get the uh, government and VA to understand that if the, if the oral health is taken care of, you'll, you'll actually end up saving a lot on the, on the medical side. And as Ellen just said, you know, you know if, if you're homeless, Probably in terms of Maslow's hierarchy of need, the last thing you're thinking of maybe necessarily is brushing your teeth and things like that. But that you, we've got to take care of it because it's going to lead to a whole bunch of other messy stuff. And that's why, you know, in addition to the financial contributions, we like to uh, uh, provide, you know, the toothbrushes and everything else. And thank you, for Peter, for making that connection. People are starting to get it. Mm-hmm. And and and, uh, and I and and thank you for giving me the opportunity on the radio to. Uh, you know, to get that message well, it only took you 20 years and a half a million dollars to get there, Tom, you know? <laughs> and people, people are amazed. Like, they go, like, and I'm riding on a chairlift. You want people to go to the dentist? I thought insurance companies don't want people to know. I go, we want people. We, yeah. Hello. You know, we want people to go. You know, I, I would love to make less money and, uh, and have people go to the dentist. And that's what, you know, that's what we're all about. And, and again, this is what and Ellen's all about. So all of my, uh, all my colleagues out there that can make a financial contribution and, um, and citizens out there, we know whether it's ten dollars, a hundred dollars, or ten thousand dollars, it's it's a real mitzvah, and and, and I hope uh, all these events uh, that are being uh, out there to bring attention to this, you know, are you know, are well are well attended. And thank you, Alan, and for really leading leading this, and Peter. Really, I, I love your show, and <laughs> it keeps it keeps me going because basically. I've been twenty. I've been twenty four seven COVID and uh, for the last seven months. And Ellen's right, and, and Peter, I think you're right. I mean, I've once you surrender to the notion that the virus, we've got to learn to live with the virus, and this is long term. I think it actually reduces stress, and you and we know things will change. You have to wear masks and things like that. But but we we can live with the virus. Um, it's not a short a short term thing. That was, that was well stated by uh, well, you know by Ellen. You are you're obviously a man of impeccable taste. Um, uh, Greg, when is the uh, when is the barbecue again? Uh, August 9th, Sunday, August, August 9th. 9th. So that's good. That's okay. it. That's a little bit of time yeah, as things good. reopen up. And the Everett Arena area, there's a, there's a lot of room to socially distance there. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, it's uh, and we are actually scheduling uh, arrival times for uh, meals to uh, spread that out as well. You oh, actually nice. will sign up when you buy your tickets. You will you will schedule a, an, an arrival time as well. Oh, nice. Now, now where's the, stagger those in? That's where's great. it going to be set up? Uh, uh, Greg? The the backside of Everett Arena, right on the uh, Merrimack River. There's plenty of uh, shade trees there, yeah. and and again, um, everybody needs to bring their own chair. Uh, uh, we won't be putting out tables or anything. So. Yeah. Um, and uh, there, there, we do plan on having uh, some bluegrass uh, uh, music playing if, if we, we can get all that uh, scheduled. And, and I would encourage individuals to go again to ConcordHomeless.org. Uh, the menu is there. The, the tickets are there. Um, and, again, I think just the price of that, the meal, you would pay that much just for the meal. Right. Uh, so it's, 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 a great, uh, it's a great deal and a great way to help the coalition. And so, uh, you know, if, if businesses are listening and can sponsor, it, 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 uh, that would be great. If not, anyone that can uh, purchase tickets, very, very helpful. And, okay. and in theory, I could pull in by boat, couldn't I? <laughs> In, in, in oh, theory, yeah. if you were a ticket holder, yes. Yes, yes. if you it's were a I'm, ticket holder. It's, right. it's their version of curbside pickup. Yeah. Yes. You know, I could do that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, it's a great little boat launch right there at the Everett. And, yeah, if you're on the, 
you're on the Merrimack and you're a ticket holder. Boom, beat the traffic. Hello, That's come awesome. in by boat. And we'll be itching. We'll be itching for events like these where people can get together and again, socially distant, uh, but enjoy mm-hmm. a great meal outdoors. Enjoy some live yep. music. Yep. I mean, these are some of the things we've been craving. Well, and right. you're enjoying food, enjoying music, and you're giving back to the community. Yeah, right. Win, right. win, win. Yeah. Right across the board. Uh, we have to take a quick break. 8.51 is yeah, the time. Oh, let's do that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll be back with more uh, Concord Food Co-op right after this. You know how this works. Yeah. You're going to say, I got plenty of time to do it. Yeah, yeah, And by the yeah, time you get know. there, you're going to find out it's sold out. What do you mean it's sold out? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So, uh, <laughs> it, 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 Greg is not just trying to create false urgencies. Giving him the, the straight stuff saying, right. yeah, we are going to cut off tickets. So, you yeah, it, if uh, if they're you know two meal packs, uh, that's only 250 individuals that or tickets that can be sold. Uh, oh, I guess no, so. Yeah. 250 groups, and so um, I do think. Uh, well, certainly hope we'll have a sell out crowd. Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on, you know, you you, you want to get back to the community. Here's mm-hmm. a, here's a, here's a great mm-hmm. way to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's the most strategic way to do it. We'll be socially distanced. Mm-hmm. You're raising money for probably one of the most important social initiatives we can possibly be behind. Um, and you'll and you'll get out there and probably see some neighbors you haven't seen uh, since uh, mm. March 13th. <laughs> I know. So, mm. and and I did want to say uh, when we launched the um, Pillars of Support program, uh, uh, Northeast Delta Dental was the first uh, one of the first to jump on board and say yes, we want to be a pillar. And uh, Northeast Delta Dental is a gold sponsor of the uh, Bluegrass Barbecue. So uh, thank you, Tom, uh, in, in Northeast Delta Dental, very much for that support. We're happy to do that, and I know some of my CEO and other leader colleagues are out there, so um, jump on board with me, please. It's uh, the most important thing we can do for our community. That's awesome. Good point. And it's, it, it's, also, uh, it's, it's also an organization that's, Ellen, you're getting stuff done. We are. We are with a lot of help, with a lot of support. We're, we're sort of the tip of the arrow, so I would not say we're doing it alone by any means, but as working together with all our partners, we are getting things done. And, and, and Ellen makes a good point there, which is she is so smart because she gets all the other affiliated organizations because all of this is connected, food insecurity, homelessness, drug addiction, you know, bad oral health. It's all, it's all related, and, and, and uh, Ellen health. sees those connections. Yep. Complete web. Yeah, and there was it's a strong community. Concord is a strong community, and we really can we really can end homelessness if we set our minds and our hearts to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's the thing I like about you know some of the, sometimes it's hey send us money we're going to try to find a cure. Yeah, okay, it, it, that's thirty years down the road. This one you, you can have an impact on now. Yeah. with your money, yes. which yeah. is great. You can get your hands around it. it w- yep. This is it, this is you know. Unlike some other larger cities, we can get our hands around this. And yes, mm-hmm. I mean, and Ellen, we tell, we talk about this. It would be great if the Conca Coalition uh, uh, worked itself out of business. Yeah, it would be great to close the doors. It'd be great to close the doors. <laughs> yeah. So, and Ellen feels that way. So we can get our hands around. That's a great way of putting it, Peter. Uh, Greg, uh, where where can they get tickets? Uh, ConcordHomeless.org. Okay. There you go. And get them. Get them now. Yeah. Don't don't put it off. You know what happens at the once the Fourth of July arrives. Um, before, Go, gone, it's Labor Day. Before we so, leave, you you have a little proclamation there, Greg, or uh, award. Yes, uh, this this weekly show that the uh, Concord uh, Food Co op uh, produces. Um, we prior to COVID, um, uh, Kim from the marketing department of the Concord Food Co op was filming it, editing it, and then it was sent to uh, Concord TV mm-hmm. and and back to uh, NH1 and also on our Facebook post. Um, so Concord TV just recognized the Concord Food Co-op um, Programming Excellence Award for outstanding contributions in producing and hosting Community Connections Weekly TV Radio Show. Um, so it's it's based on you know the uh, Co-op Community Connections is uh, we bring the community together and Pat and uh, and uh, Peter, I'm Peter thank you yep. and thank you so much for uh, your contributions to this award. Did, did they spell our names right? Yes, oh, they okay. did. Uh, <laughs> the incomparable Peter St. James. The incomparable. <laughs> Tom, Ellen, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll keep talking you. about this. And Greg, as always, thank you, my friend. Go get the rotisserie chicken. Concord Food right. Co-op. Get down there now. If you're in the mood for real food, it's Concord Food Co-op.